Good morning, Daily Banter readers. This is your intrepid White House reporter, Tommy Christopher. We are headed for the White House for uh, a day at the White House, too. Some sort of boogaloo. I'll, I'll add that in later. Um, my plan for you today is for the first time ever in all the time I've been covering the White House, I'm going to attend a, uh, an event with the Vice President. And then, uh, if that finishes in time, we're going to try and run back over and hit the briefing as well. Uh, but the uh, Vice President's event is scheduled for 11.30. Briefing scheduled for 12. Uh, now, briefings usually start on the average of about 40 minutes late. But it'll just be my luck that today they'll start on time. So we'll see. Okay, today's event will be held in the South Court Auditorium uh, of the Eisenhower Executive Building. That's where, actually where the last event I took you to is, so we won't be going to a new place, but we will be doing a new thing. Vice President Biden, he should be fun. Let's see how it goes. Okay, here we are in the South Court Auditorium, waiting for the Vice President. And um, I've been informed that they Rather brusquely, I might add, that they will not, not be holding the briefing until the Vice President's finished. But, like I said, they're usually about 40 minutes late anyway, so we might still be good. Well, let's see how this goes. And as you can see, uh, not a lot of folks covering this. It's being live, live streamed on WhiteHouse.gov, too. So we're not going to tape the whole thing. We'll just try and get you some behind-the-scenes color here. partnership and these grants I'm so grateful so many of my colleagues at the Department of Labor at the Department of Education uh, it is not easy to review these grants and the reason it's not easy is because the grant applications keep getting better and better because you're learning more and more and for every grant recipient there are so many other worthy applicants for whom we ran out of money or the computer infrastructure for the US <laughs> Vice President, he starts Wednesday. And by the way, they liked him so much. He said, this is a true story. You know, and so it's a big step up from you know, his part-time job at the college as a lab tech and a tutor. And so he is really rocking and rolling. And I'm so excited. And I'm equally excited to introduce uh, Ginny Quillen because uh, Ginny Quillen's life story is the testament of uh, the importance of second chances, of resilience and resolve. She grew up in some challenging circumstances. And okay, this is the Eisenhower Executive Office Building. That's where we had our event with the Vice President earlier, which, as it turns out, was kind of a waste of time because, uh, you know, believe it or not, the uh, press staff for the Vice President is even more sort of uh, restrictive and than uh, than for the President. You know, at least you know at the President's events usually you can move around and try and get uh, some good uh, good photographs, some good shots, but uh, they kept us pretty well penned off from the Vice President. And then after the event, he just turned around and left, so um, might as well watch the whole thing on the live stream. And ground troops into a combat role in Iraq. Well, I, no, 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 no. It's important. This is this is really important. I encourage you to go back and look at his testimony. What he was very clear about is he did contemplate a possible situation in the future where uh, American ground troops could be deployed into a forward position with the Iraqi security forces, but they would not be deployed into that position in a combat role. They would not be engaging personally or directly with the enemy in combat. They certainly are in harm's way and would be in harm's way. Uh, but that is very different than the kind of ground combat operation uh, that community to uh, provide greater insight uh, to you about what kinds of things fed into this broader assessment. Uh, but clearly, there's, there are multiple factors in this one equation. Uh, one of the factors is the uh, capacity. And How's it going? Fine. 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 Sorry, I'm sorry. What? I totally saw the picture. I guess you got this bad enough, but I should tell you. Alright, so this is the break is breaking up. Briefly breaking up. 
Yeah. Okay. How you doing, buddy? Okay. And this little box here is, uh, it's sort of like our life vest. I mean, if there's a chemical or a biological attack, we're all supposed to run back here and try and put these things on before we die. So that's not too unnerving or scary. Uh, yeah, 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 I saw that. Okay, now this is the route up to the uh, upper press office where Josh Ernest's office is. First, uh, there's the this is the lower press office, and then there's this neato sliding door. Then you go up the ramp, hey, okay, uh, to the upper press office, and uh, this is these are the two best places to go to get people not to give you quotes. And this is the uh, view of the White House uh, from just outside the briefing room. So uh, I guess this would be a. Uh, just uh, just west of the uh, the west side of the of the White House of the residence, and then here's the uh, press office in the West Wing. Now this is where I will usually do my work after the briefings. Um, I'll just grab a chair in the briefing room, set up my Wi-Fi, and type away. The life of luxury. This is the old uh, White House swimming pool. And these are all the signatures of the people who signed it. And they just keep it going back right now. Alright, now here is something that a lot of people get to see. Well, everybody's seen the briefing room, but if you go back to where the uh, TV control panels are, you tilt up a little bit. Up on this ledge here, there are all kinds of little tchotchkes. Uh, get put up here by various and sundry. Okay, so it's about six o'clock now, and uh, now I know that the uh, the uh, vice president event was no great shakes, uh, but uh, I have another treat for you, dear banter readers. Uh, as we walk past the uh, uh, Pebble Beach, where White House reporters do their stand-ups in front of the uh, White House on the North Lawn, as I've told you before, so named because of the uh, pebbles that used to make up the the ground here. Uh, so it's about, it's about six o'clock and everybody's doing their stand-ups. I am on my way to do a, uh, TV spot. Oh. I'm on my way to do a TV spot with, uh, Tom Hartman. So I'll take you behind the scenes of what it's like to do a, uh, a, uh, cable spot. Uh, uh, cable news TV spot. So that should be interesting, right? All right. Okay, here's another view of the fence. You know what I'm talking about there, see? Right at the top there, all you gotta do is extend that old fence another two feet, bolt something on there for about one length of fence, and then you got no more jumpers. So, all this other business is kind of a waste. And here it is from the other side. 
All right, so where we're going now is the uh, RT America building, which is, well, I mean, the whole building's not theirs, but uh, it's about uh, two blocks east of the White House on G Street. So that's where we're headed now. And there is the Laughing Man Tavern. I it from afar. <laughs> There's the uh, Laughing Man Tavern, a uh, nice little place to get your Wi-Fi on. And this is the uh, this is the RT America building. Here's the uh, stylish sort of Space Age Art Deco elevator. Here for. RT. Hello, how are you? Good. Tom and Christopher. Here for Tom Hartman. Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay. Oh, to your left. Alright. This is the green room. Let's see if we can. See what we got here. It is actually green. Not all green rooms are green, but this one's green. So uh, nice couches. I've uh, nearly died many a near death on these couches. And a little fridge stocked with uh, all sorts of little goodies. This here is a uh, box of baby wipes and a warmer. And that's for taking off the makeup. We'll take that. So we'll go into makeup in a little bit and then we'll be uh, on the show. A shot of your uh, makeup room. That's all right. All right, so this is the studio, now empty. And I'm going, going, to back, uh, going back to get makeup. Make me look pretty. And then we will be on the show before you know it. McCain, of course, is conveniently forgetting the role the Iraq War, which he supported, played in creating ISIS. You want to come back? Hey, Tom, thanks for having me. Great to have you with us. Uh, what do you make about the president's comments about underestimating ISIS? Well, I think uh, reporters at the White House today, when they heard this, uh, it was a couple hours ago, everybody's sort of freaking out about it because we all know, you know, what the geography is, what the layout is, and. Um, and, and, and the, the White House is small building. <laughs> yeah, and the White House isn't confirming the the Washington Post report, but I will just say that they sort of seem surprised by this. Tommy, we got a we got a boogie. Thank you so right. much for being with us. Thanks, Tom. It's always great to have your insights. Tommy explains how he's been threatened with a lawsuit by a G, by a GOP operative for simply telling the truth. I'm Aaron H. I'll do a little behind the scenes thing for my uh, my readers so they can see uh -huh. what it's like to do a uh, oh, TV cool. hit. Oh. So this is Tom Hartman. So. This is Tom thanking the readers for being on the show today. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So, uh, all right. So this is uh, exciting. This uh, we're all, all stopped now uh, for some sort of a motorcade. Seven thirty a.m. Rush hour traffic. All right, so we've been waiting here for about five, six minutes now. This is what the traffic looks like behind me. That looked like a diplomatic car. Oh, and a fucking ambulance. And that's it. We're about to go. Yay. 
Okay, readers, I have called an audible. We are now headed for the uh, Rayburn House office building where we will attend the uh, Secret Service hearing, the oversight hearing with Director Pearson. Uh, buses were running late, so we're gonna get in there a little late. And then we'll hopefully be able to get back in time for the briefing at one. Here we are in the Rayburn office building. Looking for room 2154. I'm betting it's that one up there with the crowd. So, here we go. All right, and now we are headed back to the White House for this afternoon briefing. We'll be there shortly. Right, so I am currently in reporter jail waiting for my escort. The Secret Service does this from time to time whenever they want to be a pain in the ass. Uh, anybody who doesn't have a hard pass has to get an escort. Okay. Tommy. Josh, um, I have questions on two topics. Um, on Secret Service, um, when, when did you find out that the uh, intruder had not been apprehended just inside the North Puerto uh, The President will obviously be watching, you know, will, con will continue to be updated. Uh, and uh, is looking forward to reviewing the report when it's been completed. What I'm driving at is the, the, the confidence that you have and the confidence that the public has in the Secret Service is obviously an important part of deterring. This would A, uh, possibly leak out to interested reporters, uh, or B, uses information uh, that is then um, uh, compiled into questions that are uh, asked of the director. All right, Chris already responded. Thanks. This is very exciting, readers. I have scored myself a desk, the most coveted piece of furniture in the roofing room. I almost forgot about you guys. Uh, it's Tuesday evening, and I'm headed out of the White House and uh, back home. So hope you've enjoyed uh, a day at the White House to electric boogaloo or some sort of boogaloo. I haven't quite decided what boogaloo title I'm going to use yet. So. Uh, we're at the gates here, and there's the uh, infamous fence. Still not fixed, I see. So here's how you hear what you do when you leave in the White House. You gotta swipe your press pass on here, and then drop it in the bin. Buzz you out. I'll be seeing you all soon. Uh, have a good week. Put it down. Got my diamond in the back. Put on your shaggy ring, a woman.